Thank you. The next item of business is topical questions. And at question number one, I call Carol Mocken. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the reported decision to delay the progress of all new NHS capital projects for up to two years, including the Air National Treatment Centre. Cabinet Secretary Neil Gray. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I thank uh, Carol Mockin for her question. The twin challenge of a UK government cut to our capital grant over the next five years and unprecedented levels of inflation caused by Brexit, Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, and the handling of the UK economy has impacted our ability to fund capital projects. The 10% real terms cut to our capital budget is the equivalent to a reduction of around £540 million a year by 2027-28, and a cumulative reduction of £1.6 billion over the period. Unfortunately, this has meant that all NHS capital projects, including the National Treatment Centre and AIR, will be paused. Uh, our emphasis now has to be on addressing backlog maintenance and essential equipment replacement. All capital projects are now under review, and I expect the Deputy First Minister to set out the results of that review in the coming weeks. The Deputy First Minister will also be writing to the Chancellor ahead of the budget, asking him to reverse the cuts to our capital investment budget. Carol Mockin. Thank you. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? He knows that I am no fan of the Tory government at Westminster, but I think it is fair to say that after 17 years in power, patients and staff alike are starting to get fed up with this government, this SNP government, deflecting blame and responsibility. NHS Air Shannon have already purchased the Carrick Glen site, which will now lie unused. And all the while, patients in this health board area suffer on long waiting lists and have less provision close to home because of long-term underfunding. Will he be setting out a time scale for Parliament for getting the critical delivery of Air National Treatment Centre back on track? Or will the people of Ayrshire just have to record this as yet another example of the SNP saying one thing and doing another? They need a time frame. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. I thank Carol Mockin uh, for her question. Uh, obviously, I would rather have these projects going ahead for some of the reasons that uh, Carol Mockin sets out. I want to see an increased capacity and ability to uh, address the needs of the people of Scotland through our uh, NHS. But the financial reality is that we are facing increased costs uh, and due to spiral inflation, uh, driven uh, to a large extent by the disastrous mini-budget by uh, Truss and, and Quartain, but also uh, a diminishing budget, £1.6 billion uh, over the coming years. Uh, and that is the consequences that we are discussing today. As I've set out, the Deputy First Minister uh, will be uh, returning to Parliament with a uh, response to the review of all capital projects, uh, and I would expect to be able to give her further information off the back of that. Carol Mockin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And again, I thank the Cabinet Secretary. Um, it is not just in Ayrshire, however, where the impact of these delays will be felt. Across Scotland, important promises have been broken. Um, his constituents will have similar feelings to my own, as the SNP government can't even deliver a new Monklands hospital in the Cabinet Secretary's own backyard. These are promises made by the SNP government. Patients wait for years on waiting lists. Staff are working in buildings that are literally crumbling and in response, rather than deliver the local health provision that they have promised, the SNP have put the brakes on developments that are critical to the future. If the government cannot be trusted to deliver the project in the Cabinet Secretary's own backyard, Presiding Officer, I think we do have to have the Parliament updated on what the timescale will be for these projects to be undertaken. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I should set out, uh, in order to avoid a, a conflict of interest, I've recused myself from any government decision making in relation to the Monklands replacement project. As uh, Carol Mockin uh, would expect, as it is in my constituency, it is clear, however, from a briefing that I received in my constituency cap capacity from NHS Lanarkshire uh, at the start of the month, that their work continues towards a full business case for this much-needed new hospital by uh, 2031. Uh, the Deputy First Minister is going to be writing to the UK Chancellor asking for a reversal of the cut uh, to uh, the capital budget. That has a material impact on our ability to be able to invest in capital projects. £1.6 
billion pounds less over the coming years is a material factor uh, in the decisions that we're having to take. It, having to take. And I would obviously be keen uh, to work with Carol Mockin uh, on ensuring that an incoming UK Labour government uh, would uh, seek to invest in our public sector services and our economy by reversing these cuts uh, to uh, capital projects, because at the minute it's an unsustainable position from Labour as they just want to follow the Tory spending plans. Thank you. We have much interest from members, and I will insist on concise questions and responses. And I call Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Attorney Officer. In addition to the letter the Cabinet Secretary spoke about there, can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update regarding the Scottish Government's latest engagement with the UK Government with regards to the capital budget, bearing in mind, and as the Cabinet Secretary has touched upon, the UK Government's disastrous autumn statement slashed the Scottish Government's capital budget, and the UK Government's reckless spending decisions have a substantial impact on capital investment, and it's clear that we need to see the Chancellor rectify this funding situation in the spring budget. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, Stuart McMillan uh, sets out the context uh, of the situation we're in uh, very well. We saw a lack of investment from uh, the autumn statement in public services. We took decision uh, uh, to ensure that all the consequentials that we had available to us continue to be invested in public services, including a real terms increase to our uh, NHS and social care services. However, uh, a re reversal of uh, the capital cuts coming forward would have a, a major our impact on our ability to invest in what we need to in our uh, NHS estate, uh, as has been pointed out. Uh, and uh, the Deputy First Minister met with the Chief Secretary to the Treasury last month and made clear that the UK Government must prioritise investment in public services and infrastructure over tax cuts in the forthcoming UK Spring Budget. Sharon Dowie. The presiding officer. The delay to treatment centres in Ayr and across Scotland is unacceptable, especially given Carrick Glen was already a working private hospital. The former Health Secretary, now the First Minister, announced the treatment centre at Carrick Glen just before local elections. But yet again, we have another broken promise from the SNP and one that will have serious consequences for people in agony waiting for treatment in our NHS. Some people in Ayrshire think this was just another election gimmick. Can the Cabinet Secretary promise that the treatment centre in Ayrshire will not be scrapped altogether? And what does he have to say to people waiting for treatment, like my constituent, who urgently needs surgery or he will be unable to continue caring for his wife? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, obviously, I, I, I sympathise and I have great sympathy for anyone in, in that situation, as has been uh, set out by the member. We have uh, just had two new national treatment centres come uh, on track and two to come in the process of this year at the Golden Jubilee and NHS Forth Valley, which um, will mean that we've got an uh, increased capacity of 20,000 uh, uh, in these national treatment centres. Uh, I would have obviously wanted us to go further than that. That's what our plan was. Uh, but the financial reality of uh, increased costs due to spiralling UK inflation uh, and a cut to our budget of £1.6 billion over the coming years mean that we have to review uh, our couple pro capital projects going forward. Kate Forbes. Uh, fully appreciating the capital settlement for, for the Scottish Government uh, from the UK Government is absolutely dire. This news couldn't have happened at a worse point because in Fort William, progress is finally being made on planning for a new Belford after years of being promised one. NHS Highland has been asked to suspend the work. And my question to the Cabinet Secretary is that even if there is no capital yet to build the hospital, which we accept because of the settlement, would the Scottish Government at least allow the planning process at REBA 3 to progress so that the work to date around planning isn't wasted? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And I thank uh, Kate Forbes uh, for what I think is a very uh, sensible uh, approach. We're uh, absolutely engaged uh, on uh, that issue at the moment, and we will certainly seek uh, to take that suggestion that Kate Forbes has made uh, forward. It is essential that NHS boards continue to plan for how they will improve and reform services, and will remain committed to supporting them in that process. And I go back to the point that many capital projects across the country are under threat, not because of anything that the Scottish Government has done, but because of the UK Government's disastrous management of the economy, Members. as well as the 10 per cent cut to our budget, £1.6 billion over the coming years, presiding officer, which will impact not just on health projects, but capital projects across the country. So once again, we appeal to the UK Government to use the spring budget next month to reverse that devastating cut to allow us to see those important health capital projects go ahead. Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Scottish Government, uh, to solve the Murray maternity issue, promised £5 million investment in Raidmore's maternity unit. This is now on hold. 
So I don't see what the government are going to say to Caithness from others who might have to travel four hours in labour to get to a maternity hospital in Aberdeen or Perth. Will the Cabinet Secretary work with me to see if there's a way of resolving this issue and making sure the investment in Regmore, which is long overdue, is continued? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the question from Edward Mountain, and I uh, well appreciate the, the situation that he has described as, as, as incredibly challenging. I can't give a direct commitment in terms of the investment of Regmore, but what I can commit to is uh, his uh, suggestion of working with them to see if there is anything more that can be done to uh, ameliorate some of the difficulties uh, that uh, women in uh, his region region are, are facing, and I'd be more than happy to follow up uh, in due course with him on that point. Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We've heard about the Belfield, uh, Hosp Belfield Hospital in Loch Harbour. Then there's the reprovisioning of the Caithness General. Um, there's also the reprovisioning of the Princess Alexandra Eye Pavilion in Edinburgh. All of these are much needed projects, all of them already delayed, and it amounts to nothing more than a hard stop on these much needed projects by this government. The public are having nothing, none of it, when it comes to the excuses offered. When it comes to the National Treatment Centre, the Cabinet Secretary will know that the government pledged that these would be conducting 40,000 inpatient procedures a year from next year. With the hard stop put on those treatment centres, what does he have to say in terms of the impact that will have on his government's efforts to drive down waiting times? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I, I don't disagree with the assessment of these projects being much needed. As I set out to Carol Mocken, I absolutely agree that if we uh, had the finance available, we would be deploying it. That's absolutely clear. But uh, Alex Cole Hamilton, as others across the chamber, cannot ignore the financial reality that we've got increasing costs and a diminished budget because of decisions that have been taken uh, elsewhere. And I would be keen to work with Alex Cole Hamilton to try to persuade uh, UK ministers uh, to reverse uh, the capital costs, the capital cuts, uh, rather than uh, trying to lay the blame uh, at the Scottish Government, which is doing all it can to invest in these projects. In terms of the National Treatment Centres, uh, they are going to be delivering 20, 000, uh, 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 an increased uh, capacity of 20,000 uh, elective surgery uh, uh, cases. Uh, it's not where we want it to be. We want to have all those National Treatment Centres up and running, uh, which is why we need a reversal to the cuts to our budget. Annabel Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary to his new post? And I, I do wish him very well indeed. And in light of the current financial challenges, as outlined uh, this afternoon by the Cabinet Secretary, it seems to me that it is sadly inevitable uh, that a prioritisation of current capital projects in the health sector will now require to be made. But Cabinet Secretary, given the Scottish Government first promised a new medical centre for Loch Gelly in 2011, surely it must be Loch Gelly's turn now. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I thank uh, Annabel Ewing uh, for her question and for her uh, kind uh, wishes, which I appreciate. Uh, I also appreciate the situation that she faces in her constituency with regards to uh, the project that she describes in uh, Loch Gelly. Um, I have no doubt that as a, a strong constituency advocate that she is, that she'll continue to make that case. And I'd be more than happy, uh, as I've offered to others, to have a discussion around what may be possible. Uh, and the, at the moment, the, uh, all capital projects are across uh, government are uh, under review, as she is aware, and the Deputy First Minister will be re uh, returning uh, with the results of that review, which will set out the trajectory for our capital investments going forward. Graeme Simpson. Thank you. The full business case for the replacement Monklands Hospital will be ready next year, we're told. That is a year late. So can the Cabinet Secretary promise that we'll have a new hospital open in 2031 as we were promised. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. As uh, I've already set out in response to a question from Carol Mocken, I have recused myself from uh, decision-making uh, on a government perspective in relation to the Monklands Replacement Project because it uh, rests within my constituency, as Graham Simpson would expect. Uh, I know he was on the same uh, call with NHS Lanarkshire that I was at the start of this month in my constituency capacity uh, where uh, they set out that progress continues to be made towards that full business case for that much needed hospital by 2031. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. I appreciate the, the Cabinet Secretary has just answered to Graeme Simpson there on the Monkman's Hospital, but he will be aware, like I am, that there is great concern amongst constituents 
uh, given the, the news yesterday. Many will also be aware of the need, uh, the urgent need for a new Monklands Hospital. He was also on the same call as myself with NHS Lanarkshire, who seemed confident that the project will go ahead. So can I ask what discussions the Government have had in relation to the, the new Monklands Hospital? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I thank uh, Fulton McGregor uh, for that question and uh, also for uh, reiterating the fact that this is a much needed uh, project. Uh, I have a constituency interest uh, in that, so I've had to recuse myself from a government decision-making uh, perspective in it, and I'll make sure uh, that uh, Philip McGregor uh, gets uh, a written update from a government perspective from uh, my min one of my ministerial colleagues to ensure he's kept up to date. Uh, but the, his understanding from that meeting uh, with NHS Lanarkshire is the one that I share. Question number two, Liam Kerr. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on whether the A96 will be duelled from Inverness to Aberdeen. Minister Fiona Hislop. We remain committed to improving the A96, including duelling Inverness to Nairn and the Nairn Bypass, despite a worst-case scenario for Scotland following the UK autumn statement. I am acutely aware of the importance of the route to those living along the corridor, and our current plans are to fully duel the route. As part of this process, we are undertaking the corridor review, which through initial consultation generated 11,000 improvement options. It is only right that these are fully appraised. I am expecting draft outcomes from the review to be ready for final public consultation in the coming months before reaching a final decision. Liam Kerr. Well, in 2011, the SNP promised the A96 would be duelled in full by 2030. No ifs, no buts, no climate corridor review. Cabinet Secretary, 11 people have been killed and 69 seriously injured on the A96 in the last four years, with two more tragically lost just last week. But, President Officer, it turns out this government has spent just £800,000 on road safety improvements in that time, but £5 million on its climate review. Does the Cabinet Secretary have any concerns that spending over five times as much on a climate review as on saving people's lives might suggest this central belt focused government has its priorities wrong. Minister. I express my condolences to the families following the two fatalities following the accident on the 12th of February um, at Red Hill in Verness. Um, I can relay that only last year £610,000 was spent on road maintenance and safety. And I can also relay to the member that in total there has been £31 million spent on the development and the planning and all the design work necessary, particularly for the duelling aspect of the uh, Nairn, Inverness Nairn uh, aspect of that road. But as we've already heard in answers today, if we have a UK government that has not invested in infrastructure, has cut infrastructure, not just for Scotland, but for the rest of the Members, UK. let's hear the Minister. And if we also have a Labour Party that would want to continue that financial position, that puts capital infrastructure, whether it's in the Central Belt, whether it's in the north of Scotland, whether it's in the Highlands or the North East, in a very difficult position. I will continue uh, the job in ensuring that the review develops and also the important work on the A96 Inverness Nairn bypass continues. Liam Kerr. Well, of course, the question was not about how much has been spent, but about the £800,000 spent on road safety improvements. That is pitiful. Yeah. Cabinet Secretary, over the weekend... The Northern Scot reported that the promise to duel the A96 by 2030 was abandoned more than three years ago. Yeah. FOIs suggest that the disgraced former Transport Minister, Michael Matheson, ensured that the public was not told of this. So let me ask this Cabinet Secretary clearly and concisely a yes or no question. Will the SNP duel the A96 in full by 2030 as was promised? Minister. The SNP government will respect the review that is taking place, respect all those thousands of people have inputted into that. Let our us current, hear the Minister. Our current plans are to duel the A96, but in particular the A96 duelling between Inverness and Nairn is a priority, as the member well knows. Yeah. Fergus Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, on the 19th of February, 2021, 
the then Cabinet Secretary, Michael Matheson, announced that the made orders for the Nairn Bypass and the dual section of the A96 from Inverness uh, would be made, would be issued that summer. Three years on, they still haven't been made. Has this three-year delay been deliberate as a means of ensuring that the Scottish Government don't have to spend the money on delivering their promise for a near bypass for which my constituents have waited over 15 years? And if the Cabinet Secretary refutes that proposition, will she now publish a detailed plan setting out when construction will begin and when it will be completed. Minister. As I advised Mr Ewing during our recent meeting, Transport Scotland is pressing forward with the significant work and it is significant work required to publish the made orders for the A96 Inverness to Nairn, including Nairn Bypass. I look forward to that happening in the first quarter of 2024, which also includes provision for the compulsory purchase orders, with a view that we can complete the statutory process for the scheme. Now, delivery of the scheme, as he well knows, can only commence if approved under the relevant statutory authorisation process. And thereafter, a timetable for progress can be set in line with available budgets. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has again given a commitment to duelling the A96 from Inverness to Nairn, including the Nairn Bypass. Therefore, I was surprised to discover through an FOI that only one piece of land has been bought thus far at Milton of Culloden and that no other compulsory purchase orders had been made. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to tell us how much land she will require to be purchased for this piece of work and when it will be completed? Minister. Well, as I've relayed in, in previous uh, answers, there is a strategy process, there is a stage process in terms of that uh, work that's required. The made orders will enable the compulsory purchase orders for that section to be delivered. And, uh, President Officer, we expect to announce that in the first quarter of 2024, which is very, very soon indeed. Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motions 12210 and 12211 in the name of Hamza Youssef on appointment of Scottish Ministers and Junior Scottish Ministers. And I invite members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons.